thinking can be defined best by our good friend, John Dewey. Um, he explained <laughs> critical thinking as the careful examination of knowledge through the lens of information that supports that knowledge, meaning that most higher order thinking occurs when students are asked to analyze the things they already know so that they might be able to come to, come to understand the things that they don't already know. Um, so the biggest point of my inquiry that I came upon was that there are three main components of the cognitive process, which are analyzing, evaluating, and creating. Um, understanding and stimulating the cognitive process, or the way in which we think, is key to critical thinking. In a 2008 study, the National Art Education Assessment conducted a study that sought to prove how student learning in, in and critical thinking was of the highest concern in the classrooms across the United States. The, the study indicated that teacher talk, which includes teacher instruction and also student non-performance responses, so just talking and questions and things, um, that accounted for 47% of rehearsal time. So of this 47% of rehearsal time, only 15% of that time included the teacher incorporating activities that sparked critical thinking and the three cognitive processes we defined earlier. So spending about half of a rehearsal time just on talking doesn't seem so efficient. So if the teacher is really spending about half of the rehearsal on something other than student performance, then the time should be used purposefully. In a high school setting where students are ultimately being prepared for college or honestly just life, the use of critical and higher order thinking is absolutely essential. Students aren't going to use the skills they didn't develop in the first place, which is why the need for higher order thinking activities is so great. These, study, these studies thus concluded that music teachers appear to be spending little time developing critical skills, thinking skills, into the classroom. Another researcher by the name of Matthew Garrett sought to bridge the gap between the information discovered in 2008 and the classrooms existing within the last couple years. Garrett studied 18 different choral rehearsals in the high school setting across the United States, and he was looking to document how this non-performance time was being used, and he broke it down into three groups. So we have non-performance activities by student or teacher that exemplified lower order thinking, critical order thinking, critical high order thinking, and non-specific non-performance activity by student or teacher that included silence. So I found the conclusions from his research to be pretty interesting. Um, the mean percentage of performance time was about 46%, so that's pretty similar to the findings from 2008, which was 47%. But that still leaves a whopping 54% of non-performance time, more than half of a rehearsal time, is being used by non-performing. So this is what, we observe, what he observed during that time. 46% of the rehearsal time exhibited the use of lower order thinking. So that's almost all of the non-performance time. And examples of activities used include questions like, how many sharps are in G major? Or can someone tell me what happens when you breathe correctly? Now these are okay questions to ask during a rehearsal, but they don't promote critical thinking. All the student needs to do is pull information from their head, and cognitive processes are not being utilized here. Only 2% of non-performance time included non-specific, non-performance time in silence, and these activities are just transition times, um, just logistical things happening, warm up, that kind of thing. So that's expected in a classroom. But what is perhaps the most startling statistic here is that only 6% of non-performance time exhibited critical thinking. So examples of activities here would be, um, where has the composer done something different that tells you we're in a new section of this piece? Or even audiation exercises, like I'm going to play a triad and you find and sing the third of the chord. These kinds of questions do tap into the three cognitive processes. Students will not find the right answer by recalling and reciting information. They must instead use previous knowledge to analyze the music, make the connection, and then think about the question that they were asked to even formulate an answer. So this is the kind of thinking that music educators need to focus more on. Um, an important quote that I found in my research said that performance excellence without active understanding goes against critical thinking. This quote speaks volumes to me on a personal level. In high school, we rarely practice sight reading and solfege, and our goals were ultimately to have, success, have a successful concert. The class exhibited no real critical thinking skills. My mind keeps returning to the previous quote, that performance of excellence goes, with, goes against critical thinking. Being someone who is so intellectually inclined, I craved the critical thinking activities that my other math classes had already established. Part of my reasoning for applying to Westminster was how was about how they take music past the music making level. 
Here, we think critically about music. We harness what a real music education environment is capable of. And clearly, this is an ongoing topic of the world in the music of the world of music education. Um, and as a future future music educator, it would be awesome to see an increase in critical thinking within every level of music education. And whether you desire to teach general elementary music or collegiate choral classes, I hope that you feel the same as I do. Um, in that we need to change for developing critical thinking as more than just a music skill, but as an essential life skill taught through music.